Our food is filled with all sorts of unknown and dangerous chemicals, with companies resorting to such methods simply because it lets them stretch their profits and save on expenses. Unfortunately, these products are then being served to us en masse, with many people being unaware of such treatment. These five products you'll never eat once you know what they're made of are included in this list, and we suggest that you do your homework before your next shopping trip, just to be on the safe side. Before we begin, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified every day for more amazing content. That being said, let's begin. Number 5. Ground Beef, Carbon Monoxide, Pink Slime, and Ammonia we really don't know where to start when it comes to all the problems that come with prepackaged ground beef. While these practices are common in the beef industry, many other packaged meats undergo the same treatments, meaning that any of the meat available at your local supermarket could put your health at risk. First and foremost, carbon monoxide is routinely injected directly into packaging after it's vacuum sealed. This helps avoid oxidization, which helps meat keep that pretty pink color. It's all a lie, however, with companies not caring how they prepare your food as long as it looks good. If carbon monoxide poisoning isn't enough of an issue, many companies also soak their products in vats of ammonia before packaging to help reduce germs in low-grade meat. This means they don't have to worry about keeping their meat as fresh as they possibly can. They can get away with poor standards of hygiene specifically because of this practice, which helps companies avoid maintaining peak standards while still pumping out products that won't immediately kill us, with immediately being the key word here. Ammonia is not meant for human consumption, but that doesn't stop companies from soaking our food products in it and letting us deal with the side effects later on down the road. Ammonia treatments also let companies feed us a concoction known as pink slime, not to be confused with mechanically separated meat, which is still very pink and slimy. This form of pink slime is created by dropping the worst cuts of meat in a centrifuge, which then melts fat off and leaves a pink substance that they label lean, finely textured beef. Because this meat is filled with the nastiest germs you can imagine, it's then treated with ammonia to stop us from getting too sick right off the bat, thus exposing this nasty practice. The good news is that word is getting out, with McDonald's and other fast food companies promising not to use any pink slime products. Indeed, even the National School Lunch Program has got with the uh, <clears throat> program and includes lunch options that avoid such gross products being included in your child's school lunches. Number 4. Packaged Chicken – Salt Water Injections Too much salt is definitely not good for our bodies, with one routine food packaging practice causing some serious alarm nowadays. It turns out that salt water is being regularly injected directly into our packaged meats in an attempt to make them more plump, juicy, and appealing. This also allows manufacturers to charge more for a meal that really doesn't amount to much, with these injections helping to increase the weight of said food, which is then sold, surprise surprise, by weight. This sneaky trick isn't just draining our wallets faster than we'd expect, but it's also causing some serious side effects in the greater population as a whole. This practice is used for almost all packaged meats, with chicken being the heavy hitter in the group. Almost all pre-packaged chicken you find on your supermarket shelves has undergone this salty treatment, but not all is lost. Being aware of this fact lets you plan ahead and keep yourself clear of falling victim to such shady practices, especially if you know what to look for on your food labels. Keeping an eye out for terms like flavored with a solution or up to X percentage of chicken broth is a clear indicator that salt water injections have been utilized to screw you out of your good health and hard earned savings. What really makes this practice a killer is the fact that most chicken products will contain somewhere around 50 or 60 milligrams of sodium per serving, with salt water injections boosting this number by up to six times, reaching heart attack inducing levels of 300 milligrams or more. No wonder our doctors are overly worried about our sodium intake because that's more than anyone should be consuming, especially in one serving, which is usually only around four ounces in total. 
too much salt intake can lead to severe medical issues. We all know that drinking salt water will dehydrate you too much, but it can also lead to problems such as high blood pressure, even wreaking havoc on cognitive functioning in your brain, leading to all sorts of debilitating illnesses. Other maladies include stomach ulcers, with some studies suggesting it can even increase your chances of developing stomach cancer. So do yourself a favor and avoid any packaged meats, especially chicken, unless you're 100% sure that they don't resort to such underhanded practices, putting your safety at risk for the sake of making an extra buck. Number three, canned food, bisphenol A. Your cans quite possibly contain a potentially damaging compound known as bisphenol A, which is a name that automatically makes us feel uneasy. It's an organic synthetic compound, which again doesn't inspire feelings of confidence, and used to be used in just about every heavy plastic on the market. When reports of possible negative side effects came to light, Many companies stopped using this chemical, with the most worrying of the recalled products being infants' bottles. Used rarely now, especially in plastics, with BPA used to make certain resins, it was once one of the most widely used chemicals in the world, with four tons of it going into polycarbonate plastics in 2015 alone. The FDA says that market abandonment, not food safety, led to it being banned in baby bottles and infant formula packaging. But many experts remain adamant that it is, indeed, harmful to humans, being especially troublesome when exposed to infants or children. Adults are supposed to be healthy enough to not suffer any extreme side effects, but we're happy to stay safe rather than be sorry further on down the road. It's still used to make water bottles, CDs, and DVDs, with industrial applications ranging from lining water pipes to being included in food and beverage cans. The FDA maintains that BPA is safe as far as current levels are concerned, but we get the feeling that adding the term current levels is a sign that it's probably not worth messing around with. It should also be mentioned that the FDA routinely drops the ball when it comes to our safety, so everything they say should be taken with a grain of salt. Funnily enough, some studies have found that it has links to obesity, which seems likely, while also affecting brain and behavioral development in children. Animal studies have determined that it's toxic in higher doses, with plenty of research groups convinced that it should be banned outright after years of intensive study into these side effects. It also causes thyroid issues, leading us to believe that the FDA really doesn't care about our safety, which isn't really a surprise if we're being completely honest. It's said that foods with high acidity contents, such as tomato sauces, that are packaged in cans containing BPA are more of a concern than most, as they help to break the substance down more readily, absorbing it in higher levels than foods that are less acidic. Number two, soups and creamers, sand. Another ingredient in many household products that you probably won't be happy ingesting is sand. While you might not expect companies to put sand in their products, it's a surprisingly common additive in things like soups and creamers. It's used in these products to help avoid them absorbing too much excess moisture, thereby becoming clumpy and visually off-putting in general. It goes without saying that sand isn't toxic and probably isn't good for you, but it's a bit of a shocker to realize that we've been happily scooping spoonfuls of sand into our bodies with reckless abandon for most of our lives. It's also used as a flow agent in many other products, helping them pour properly and ensuring that little bits don't stick together. The things that companies have been putting in our food can be much more disgusting than simple, inert sand, but we'd prefer to at least know about these things ahead of time, allowing us to make our own judgment call on the subject. That being said, it isn't gonna hurt us or even react poorly with our bodies, making it pretty much perfect for such applications. So the next time you find yourself at the beach and decide to dig into your picnic after a day on the water, you should remember that your food could be littered with sand, much like the stuff you're sitting on. It's definitely worth considering that maybe you shouldn't be overly concerned about getting sand all over your meal, and that your dropped sandwich isn't gonna do much more damage than cans of regular soup have been doing for generations. 
It's funny to think that someone can get worked up over seeing a small dusting of a substance that's been included in your meals on a regular basis for as long as this practice has been going on, which is quite a long time. While the sand used in food separation is probably safer than that found on the beach, there's no real difference, chemically speaking, between the two, with beach sand probably having a little more flavor at the end of the day, but not much else. Number 1. Ice Cream and Cheese Cellulose one ingredient that's used predominantly in ice cream and shredded cheese products is cellulose, which is a substance that's found mainly in wood pulp or cotton. It's also found naturally in many products, with corn being one of the main sources. Its properties vary depending on its particular chemical makeup, with different forms of cellulose being used for many different applications. A relatively recently discovered form of cellulose is nanocrystalline cellulose, which is used as a filler in biological polymers because of its beneficial thermal and mechanical properties. Most of the cellulose we run into in our food are those derived from wood pulp or cotton. It's used in a bunch of industrially manufactured products, including paper, cardboard, textiles, rayon, cellophane, butane fuel, building insulation, and even as an inactive filler in medicinal pills. It is non-toxic, but definitely a bit of a put-off when added to our food, considering its origins and other applications. With regard to today's list, some fitting applications include using cellulose as an emulsifier, thickener, or stabilizer in processed foods. It helps add body to ice cream, also helping to achieve the right texture in mass-produced batches, which is fairly standard practice. It's also used alongside shredded cheese to stop the individual pieces from sticking together between the time they leave the factory floor and arrive in your kitchen. As we mentioned, it is relatively inert and definitely non-toxic, but the worrying idea here is that humans simply can't digest it. This means that it's a relatively useless additive as far as our bodies are concerned, and while it won't lead to any serious issues, it can upset your bowels whether or not your body's already used to it. Many people find that it causes them some discomfort when ingested, with very few people not really able to ingest it at all. We're not entirely sure where we stand as far as wanting to avoid cellulose altogether, because it's been so much a part of our diet for decades without us ever being the wiser. Still, it's strange to think that we're using a substance that's a byproduct of processed wood pulp as a standard ingredient in all sorts of foodstuffs, with ice cream and shredded cheese being only two of the many that counted in their list of ingredients. It should also be mentioned here that corn cellulose is a little different, chemically speaking, than the stuff found in other foods, as it's naturally occurring and doesn't require any additional and potentially harmful chemicals to be used during processing. Hope you enjoyed the video, folks. If you did, make sure you click that subscribe button before you head out if you're new. That's all you have to do. Come on, just click it. I, I know you want to. Oh, and if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. I heard it gives you superpowers in the future or something. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.